Hello, I'm Scott Morrison, a lean consultant for the lumber and building materials industry. To embrace lean, I teach companies how to find, identify, and then systematically eliminate sources of waste in their manufacturing, service, and delivery processes. This video walks the viewer through the steps we took to optimize the layout of a large lumber yard. By studying and then changing the locations of hundreds of products stored in the yard and the adjacent warehouses, we reduce stage or travel times by 30%. The lumber yard we studied is located at the Hyannis, Massachusetts headquarters of Shepley Wood Products. Shepley Wood Products was founded by Tony Shepley in 1978 and is the premier supplier of lumber and building materials to professional contractors on Cape Cod and the islands. Tony and the management team realized that their stagers were taking a long time to gather lumber and building materials for their delivery trucks requiring them to use more trucks and resources to keep pace with demand. There were four primary sources of waste. First and most obvious was that the stagers were routinely driving their fork trucks several hundred feet to pick and deliver high frequency products to the loading area. Because of these long travel distances, either delivery trucks were idle waiting for staging to be complete or additional trucks were deployed to the loading area, holding for orders to be picked and staged. A popular decking material, imported from overseas, is ordered by ship container and at that time was delivered to an off-site warehouse. This added significant time and cost to storing, maintaining, and then transferring materials in small truckloads to the main yard. And finally, some products were not stored adequately enough to protect the quality of the product, creating situations where good product had to be either discounted or culled. The project team represented a cross-section of the entire lumber yard, plus we added Mark Ritz from Crowder Auto Stack, who designed the racking we would need later in the project to store the relocated products. The first project objective was to collect and analyze data on the distances traveled each time a hit was recorded. A hit is defined as a single line item product, whether it is lumber or a building material, such as a box of nails, which a picker had to drive or walk to a location in the yard pick the item, and then deliver it to the staging loading area for the delivery truck. The second objective was to summarize all of the hits and distances over a two-year period to determine which items had the highest frequency of hits, meaning those items were picked the most times in combination with long distances traveled per hit. An overhead view of the lumber yard illustrates the spread of lumber and building materials across a plot of pavement that is roughly 800 feet long by 300 feet wide. Each major storage area was identified by an abbreviated code defined by the purchasing department. This allowed the team to link each product with a storage ID. We then measured the distances traveled by a fork truck from each storage location to the center of the existing staging loading area. Now it was time to review the quantity of hits against the distances traveled per hit. Generally following the 80-20 rule, we gathered data on over 700 unique stock items that were picked over a two-year period, but chose to track just the top 20% of items picked, which covered 80% of all hits recorded. Some items in the top 20% were there just because of the frequency of hits, and some just because of the long distances traveled. So we settled on the list of items that had a combination of high frequency of hits that also traveled long distances. Taking the total number of hits per item and then multiplying that number by the distance traveled per hit, and then summarizing all 232 unique items, we discovered that the fork trucks had driven nearly 19,000 miles during the study period. The top 20 items in terms of their combined scores revealed several surprises and gave us a huge opportunity to rethink how the yard and adjacent warehouses should be laid out. Given this information, we could then assess the current state of the yard to determine where we could suggest improvements. The distances traveled strongly indicated that lumber and building materials had spread to fill empty space far away from their point of use, which is the staging loading area. It was rewarding to see that there was consistency in the top items from year to year, boosting confidence that we would be relocating the right products. We could now turn our attention to where product families should be relocated. Each storage location was color-coded depending on how many products in that location were on the combined high-frequency long-distance list. Notice that several of the red and orange-coded locations 
which indicated relatively low demand, were located close to the staging area, while many green and yellow coated locations were far away. This situation was almost completely opposite of the desired locations. We want to have the high frequency items as close to the staging loading area as possible. Also, we evaluated each item to determine the best storage method. During these conversations, we began discussing the best location and contents of two auto stack structures, one outdoors for storing high volume lumber and decking that could be quickly picked by either a stage or loader or by a drive through contractor, and one indoors for storing sheets, again for quick picking. There were two potential locations for the outdoor auto stack, and once we chose the best location and orientation, which was adjacent to and in parallel with the lumber warehouse, Mark Ritz started designing the structure. Mark also designed the indoor auto stack for the first aisle of the lumber warehouse, which in turn opened up significant storage space to allow the relocation of the offsite inventory. Next, we turned our attention to the best layout and presentation of the staging loading area. We decided to move the center of the area slightly closer to where the auto stack would be built and designated loading boxes that matched overall lengths and widths of the truck beds. With the construction and relocation of staging loading settled, we then turned our attention to systematically identifying and then migrating product families to their new storage locations. The Shepley Yard team completed these steps as time permitted over the course of 16 months to minimize disruptions to contractor and delivery schedules. Once the indoor and outdoor auto stacks were completed and space was made available in the lumber warehouse, the off-site warehouse inventory was permanently transferred and the building was made available for rent to another local company. A previous cost center now became a source of revenue. Six areas of the yard were repurposed as a result of the project. The highest volume framing lumber was relocated to the area immediately across from the truck staging loading area with bunks located at the midpoint of each aisle to facilitate faster assembly and strapping. The outdoor auto stack was oriented so both drive through contractors and pickers could logically move up one aisle, turn, and then move down the adjacent aisle to ease traffic flow. The hardware shed, originally slated for an overhang area adjacent to the millwork warehouse, was erected instead at the head of the auto stack, reducing travel distances even more than originally calculated. The indoor auto stack was placed immediately upon entering the first aisle of the lumber warehouse. This eliminated the need for drive through contractors to snake through three aisles to pick up plywood sheets. The auto stack also rotated sheet stock 90 degrees to make it much easier to pull stock out, virtually eliminating the need for fork trucks to drop pallets down to floor level. The engineered wood, which is received and stored in lengths up to 60 feet, was transferred away from one of the closest locations to the staging loading area. This move cleared significant space for the framing lumber, which is picked at a much higher volume and frequency and can be more compactly stored. Finally, a large area was reorganized for long-term storage of roofing shingles, allowing purchasing to make strategic buys to support Cape Cod's demand in late summer and fall.